ਸਿਗਾ ਜੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਹਾਊ ਯੂ ਆਲ ਗੁੱਡ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਵੀ ਲਾਵ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਇਸ ਵੀ ਡੂ ਇਟ ਥਿਸ ਵੇ ਔਰ ਯੂ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਕੀਪ ਇਟ ਹੋਰਿਜ਼ੋਨਟਲ ਆ ਆ ਬਚਾਓ ਵੀ ਹੋ ਥਿਸ ਇਸ ਮੋਰ ਬੈਟਰ ਯਾ ਐਬਸੋਲਿਟਲੀ ਓਕੇ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਇਸ ਆਲ ਆਫਟਰ ਡੂ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਸੈਟਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਮਾਈ so as it is uh this a this is a, a much more structured kind of a discussion chat oh, okay nice nice <laughs> your last works. experience with me was like it was quite quite bad it seems <laughs> no no it was good it was very good i think the first conversation was brilliant and i think this is going to be the same great so how has it been like is it raining in 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 uh, gurgaon or is it over- it's been overcast for a few days it rained a bit yesterday uh, but i think delhi it has been raining a lot uh, good weather although i think it the weather has improved that's that's something to look forward to at least hopefully you know in these covid times there is something to look forward to <laughs> except the earthquakes <laughs> yeah the 10th earthquake right the 10th earthquake in a couple of months that's that's insane that's and in, in fact i was on a call yesterday and i felt my chair shake it actually shook for right. about 5 seconds and i just got up like i felt an earthquake and it was 4.7 on the richter scale very 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 massive very scary just imagine yeah, if good for you you were in your hall or you were on your seat what about people who were in the in their washrooms <laughs> because <laughs> by luck by luck whenever i have been in a washroom that's the time when bombay has experienced a earthquake Oh okay. Because according to my cousin it's my it's, it's what I eat and I'm sitting and that's what is moving the city. <laughs> But that's uh, the bad bad joke. But uh, so I'll say welcome to Sings in Conversation. I think uh, what I will uh, So this is going to be a very casual conversation not what you have at CNBC's and uh, quite a few other uh, eminent channels that i have seen uh, i have been going through all your uh, chat history okay. so uh, things in conversation was is is an idea that basically we want to introduce uh, the sikh youth you know to sikh icons out there like hamesha uh, poochha jata hai ki boss ye sector mein kon hai right mm-hmm. or what is yeah. uh koi sardar hai kin ke nahi hai right mm-hmm. yeah and till i think till in my school days also a lot of these things used to be like sardars are not like uh, nahi to army mein jante hai nahi to automobiles mein jate hai nahi to uh, apna kuch business karte hai they don't yes. they're not like uh, running shows or uh, or running a management right and that's what i wanted to correct to the youth that in every field uh, we seeks have been doing quite yes. well with and by honoring our identity not Absolutely. by this honoring uh but you don't need to you know move away from the identity just for for the sake of uh, progress right absolutely so that's the broad premises of things in conversation also that's what right. happens in this conversation is that uh i will get to, we get to know your your personal journey as well as your professional journey uh maybe these are the points where which are uh clues for these uh you know for the youth to progress maybe if somebody wants to get into the fintech industry and they would look look uh look at you as a mentor uh, so they can reach up to you uh post this particular uh, chat so uh, whatever i know about ajay pal saying the first thing is uh, the way you were introduced to me uh grab <laughs> chai was i thought it was ra- till i didn't reach the word sethi i thought i was going to be talking to the mastercard uh, the head of mastercard <laughs> yeah yeah ajay yeah. pal singh banga yeah ajay pal singh banga and then i said then i read at 1:30 am in the morning i read sethi as okay this is some other product, like, product folks have really progressed with grab chai <laughs> they're inviting ajay pal singh banga on to talk no but and, and, and the funny <laughs> part is that you both come from the the the, the money uh, the money sector yeah, money business yes Correct. So, uh, so uh, Ajay, why don't you take us through like so? Where have you, where were you born? Uh, school, college, 
uh, you know that could be the, the first section of our chat where then i also get to know who i'm uh, who ajay par great i do that thanks i think the uh, the concept of things in conversation is really really brilliant i think uh, more than just letting the youth know they are you know they are sick individuals out there doing well in different careers i think it's just great to learn uh, if you see someone who's you know obviously there are professionals in other communities as well that you should learn from if you know someone who's just closer to you there is that connect uh, so for me uh, the journey started in delhi so a delhi i by heart uh, started in uh, you know west delhi subhash nagar born and brought up there uh spent some part of my early years in singapore uh in my education my mother is with the minister of external affairs a uh, very good time i think uh, i got to be more independent very early as a kid i think that really structured me three years there very young years but i think it really taught me a lot so couple of incidences you know that one of once my mother told me to come from school to her office uh by just taking a cab myself alone so just me alone wow. taking a cab and coming so it was a 5 km drive singapore is pretty safe so i just ventured out uh you know guy in fourth standard uh, uh hailed a cab reached the office and you know started uh, reading at my mom's office and she came by later so you know it taught me a lot about being uh, independent and perspective because you know i was in international school very early on so you, i had kids from 13 nationalities in one, one class so right someone from brazil indonesia etc uh, taught me empathy taught me you know uh, taught me just be how to be more confident in life uh, so great experience right. there uh came back uh, uh went on to my do my schooling uh, in uh, delhi so mehmal jain public school uh, great fun there i think uh, some of the best i think some of the best uh, lessons and good stuff have happened to me in that school i think one of the reasons i wear a blue turban comes from that school i always wear a blue light blue or dark blue so the director of my school once said to me when i was in 7th standard he said you look like montek singh aluwalia a lot and he used to he used to refer like that to me that you, you know one day you can be montek singh aluwalia you look like him you are right. academically strong it's going to be that uh, i think very really, very good years i think it was a, and, it, and i think that's how i feel i you know i got the like for things which are young it was a young school coming up coming up and about no branches just a single school a lot of the things that you could do there you could do in a bigger school so you could audition right. for the football team you could do audition for the quizzing team uh, you could do a ton of things without having to worry that there is you no know, there's legacy of this quizzing team for past 40 years that it's been you know, the best in delhi etc all of the things were new everything was less than 5 years in origin so you had no legacy no baggage so if you performed you won you were, you might just be the first guy who won a football championship for the school so dabbled in a lot of stuff there did uh, football volleyball quizzing uh, was good at academics had great fun uh, you know as if, as every you know a guy tries to Uh, make his career uh, decided to do science in 11th and 12th just because my 10th grades were good <laughs> not because i was really into science and maths so did that uh, had dreams of iit wanted to go to iit uh, really wanted to do well ki yaar iit jayenge we'll go to uh, we'll go to dc iit one of these colleges uh, i don't know what happened uh, the exams didn't go as really well uh, landed up in gtb iit uh, it's a good college but not in the leagues of iits and dc uh, it's guru tek bahadur institute of technology in delhi Wow. I think uh, I think that happened I think that moved happened for the better uh, I think I met one of my mentors my first mentors in that uh, uh, in that college I think that helped me shape in my third and my fourth year who I am today I think right. he taught me a very important lesson he was my computer science professor uh, professor Munshi Yadav I think he taught me this one thing have a love for solving processes have a love for solving processes and creating you know algorithms to solve them solve everything in a structured manner I think that's what I've been doing. That's the core of what I've been, what I've done all across my life. You know, whether I've done consulting, fintech, uh, been part of startups. It's all about that. That's been my strength. The structured guy, the guy who brings in processes. I think that got into me from my third and fourth year in uh, engineering. Very good journey there. Uh, yeah, so that's that's my uh, college journey. I'll stop there before I you know keep, keep continuing on a monologue of my work life as well. No, yeah. that's that's it's, it's great. What you're saying. Actually, one of the questions which I just it popped in my head was, uh, you said because of the schooling that you uh, it didn't have branches and all that gave you more uh, avenues to uh, you know to try like uh, you yeah. got into sports, you got into uh, like elocution and all. Was this the same uh, premise also taken to uh, you join it with your profession as like when you're figuring out which company to join? Uh, 
Yeah, I think uh, I think one one of my very early mentors at my first job. So I landed my first job very uh, very you know in a very strange manner. So my first job was in music, my business solution. So I landed a job in campus from Infosys. Uh, and what happened was, uh, you know, Infosys used to come at that point in time to campuses and hire a lot of kids. So each they'd come to a college, hire a hundred kids, and take them to their Mysore right. uh, to send train them. Uh, I somehow took that call that I didn't want to be part of that large group. I didn't want to be a you know a faceless ma- man in a ten in a group of ten thousand. So I think that thinking came that you have to find your own identity. I waited for a while. Uh, you know, off campus, a company just came, Mu Sigma, and uh, I got to know that uh, from a forum at John Pavel guy. I interviewed for the interview. The day I turned up, uh, about a thousand kids from all over Delhi had turned up for the interview. A thousand engineers. and it was crazy you know i had never been in such a huge uh, placement right they hired just four people they just hired four people from the camp, out of 1000 people luckily i was one of them uh, amazingly that that journey took me to bangalore they were a very young firm so they were today mu sigma is a unicorn it's one of the largest analytics players in india uh, in fact uh, one of the largest in the world but at that point they were just a 250 300 member you know company very very young trying to find its way uh so there i think one of my mentors taught me he structured this thought for me the thought that i've been telling you that you know the joy of being in a young firm that are for a large part of your career right uh, the careers how you build them in the old way you know that you worked in a company for 30 years you 40 years you were you know ad of sales you moved to vp of sales senior vp of sales is not how modern careers are built his point was that you build skills in life so if you feel that you are in a company you built a skill it's good enough and if you feel don't worry about the size of the firm the size of the role in your early career see if that role is adding a skill see if that company is adding a skill to your uh, resume to your profile is that right. enabling you to be a better data scientist is that be- enabling to be a better decision maker or to be a better manager i think that's right. a very key learning i had that you know uh, a lot of times we seek security when we are young and ex- that's exactly the wrong time to seek it because you know as you grow your risk appetite is going to go worse uh the best way is to learn it when you're young take all those risks and build skills don't worry about the tag against your name don't worry about the size of the company don't worry about the paycheck against your name a lot uh just make sure in the first 7 8 years of your career you're learning a lot of skills you're you're juggling multiple things you're trying to learn marketing you're trying to do product management find to find a niche find your niche because you have your whole career to build out to your career people just you know assume that if they don't get it right in the first four four five years of the career uh you know they they go in go in with some legacy but you have to realize that nobody is watching you like at like at that school right nobody is watching that school how does how does the football team of that school do because it's a young school i think you have to just and that's the attitude you have to carry in life you just go let go of the any weight of legacy you have on your shoulders or the fact that you have to prove yourself to your parents or your friends in the end it's your career if you're not happy with what you're doing in the long run and that's going to impact your happiness in the end nobody eventually cares i think eventually you care And right. that's all. That should matter. So I think I I I've uh, always blamed the educational system for this, right? Yeah. Um, so it's like that herd mentality. If you don't do this, you won't pass. Right? Uh, we have to raise the bar. That means you yes. keep copying. You know, uh, you keep copying or keep rotating and and move, keep moving classes, right? Absolutely. I think when uh, uh there are two things which come from your like conversation uh the first thing is that first half of my life and i was in uh, when i was studying i think i lost a lot of interest when i hit sanit 7 uh in in education i was like whatever they're teaching and whatever i'm doing uh will this really matter because i come from a business family and i never saw my grandfather uh doing Uh, what do you call it, in science or maybe my stream was different there was nobody to even guide us at that time like absolutely you know you're good in computers why don't you look at this or you're good in math you do just follow this as your you know and make this your your core competency but um, i think we, we just and even I, i i meet a lot of youngsters who you know uh, they say that and they they feeling really really pressurized in your early life and i keep laughing as if you have you've got age on your side yes exactly right you can try whatever you want right kya jata kya aayega aap aap aapko nikal diya jayega you remove that company out of your resume say that you just started again work right absolutely 
or you take up another uh, if you feel there's a skill set that you you uh, uh, you know you want to pick up you want so you started your career in banking you did, you're not a numbers guy you uh, you think your career is in marketing drop out right go learn learn something or join another company or you you absolutely have a uh, study somewhere come back into the industry but enjoy whatever you're doing uh, it's so the pressure nahi ke boss aap starting yeah. age ka hai aap jitna kama jitna gawa hai education pe usko abhi kamana chalo karo yeah so i think a lot of education needs to change uh, parents need to change uh, yeah and then that's what uh, I think we both are blessed by parents who have always allowed us to do whatever we want. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think uh, I think one of the greatest things my parents enabled me. You know, when I took up my music my job, I I so it paid a meager salary back then. Right, it was not very high in terms of salary. I was barely managing my rent and some other expenses, and I, I had to shift to Bangalore to do it. So there were additional expenses as well. You manage your whole house. You live with friends. It's a new experience. But they were never worried about oh, you're not earning this much. Oh, is, this is not a great pay, paying job. It's a startup. What do I say to my friends? It was not. It was never about that. But the fact was that you know, go ahead and try it. What's the loss? And in fact, the Bangalore stint I had was one of the most amazing stints I could ever do in my life as a career. You know, I was independent really for the first time. You had to do everything on your own. I was preparing for my CAT as well, uh, parallelly for my you know MBA entrance exam. So doing that parallelly as well, and everything was on me. So and I think that's a huge either either it's very liberating or it's very uh, it instills fear if you know if you land responsibility on yourself either it's very liberating so for some people that you know yeah. it's on me I have to solve it I have to make it make it happen or it just paralyzes people with fear that you know oh shit now it's on me I can't blame anyone else I can't blame my parents uh, I can't blame my folks I can't blame my teachers I can't blame my friends I can't blame my you know you know there is not enough mahal in in the house I'm alone I'm in a city I have a job. i'm paying my own bills and i have no one to blame that that's a for initially i think it paralyzes but i think if if it if that doesn't liberate you right uh then you need to take a hard look at yourself are you really are you really going to be the are you really going to have a great career because a lot of you know movements in your career are going to be about owning up just owning up and being accountable right uh, as a manager as an individual performer you just have to own up so you still have to say mentor with you or please or you found out a few more or a group of mentors now oh i think uh, i think that's one of the key things of my life uh, i think i've always uh, believed or i've been very very lucky i have been very lucky to find some really good mentors across my you know career uh, to give you some uh, examples so first was you know the manager was mentioning in music ma very very good guy uh, taught me a lot about career so he told me you know till 32 don't worry about the paycheck so he just gave me this random number till 32 years of age don't worry about the paycheck Just worry about skills, etc. So that's the first lesson. And then when I moved on to I am Calcutta for my MBA, uh, you know, one of the professors I had there who taught us economics of HR. Uh, his thing was, you know, you guys will run after consulting, I banking jobs because that's what people do. Uh, do that now because you know you have to you are named to live to live up to. You have your you know B school bill to pay. But you guys are the most safest in the world. He says that you guys have an MBA from I am Calcutta. He says. i can count that there are few thousand people in india who have that if you right. still going to be very 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 safe if you going to play it safe if you going to do consulting and going to have a safe job and move up the ranks he says what's the point he says unless you're adding value uh, to you and to the people around you and to the ecosystem it's not going to happen so i think that got reinforced i think one of the biggest mentors i had was in uh, accenture strategy the first consulting job i took uh he was shant roy my manager uh, i think the greatest skill he taught me he, he taught me to put my career uh, on three pillars uh, he said if you have honesty curiosity and hard work he says just have these three pillars all across all across your life he says they never change whether you are a manager whether you are a vp or a founder he says these three these three skills will always stand you in good stead and the best thing was that he exhibited the skills so if he messed up he was very honest in feedback very very honest right. that you were not doing a good job you were not doing well enough uh, so i think very very good guy in that and he taught us you know while you being honest do hard work and be curious and i think that is really really nice if you want to really start something up like you start started thing style right that's a that's that comes out of genuine curiosity you know what can i do that is not there for the sick community for sick men today to style themselves to feel to look better to be proud of their identity that's a genuine curiosity if you're creating products cosmetic products for sick men 
you have to be genuinely curious what's the problem there you just can't launch another run of the mill you know uh, gel you can't just run none of the mill paid oils you have to be very curious on what goes wrong for them and what can you actually solve and it takes a lot of hard work i think that i think that's very underrated but but people find that you know that i'll work hard for these many years and then it's going to be a you know then it's going to be easy life i think that's that that dream of a panacea or a utopia ki that ek din you know one day that utopia is waiting for me i'll wait it's a the hard work is a punishment people take it as that you know hard work is a sacrifice i'm making it's a punishment i'm being you know pressed by my bosses etc it's not that the world is not out to punish you that's how great success gets made you know warren buffett has been doing investing for the past 60 years he still st- he still turns up to office every day works the same hard work right it's it's not going to change right it's not going to he's, he's not going to stop and day you know i want 60 billion i can walk away my sacrifice has paid off i think that right. that mentality that's also new other thing that parents tell us you know that hard work is a sacrifice sacrifice in your 10 12 then aram se life you know has sacrifice in your engineering and then like aram se life you have to enjoy the process of doing something i think getting up every day doing the same thing repeatedly on and on and on is a joy in itself i think which people just really really undervalue and sell it as a sacrifice i don't know why it's it's a strange thing and that's what he taught me i think that's the greatest thing he taught me that it's not a sacrifice boss you should if you really love what you're doing it's it's what you do every day get up every day get excited and do it i think it's a simple lesson but lost on a lot of people but yeah thankfully i had the mentor to tell me that otherwise i don't know where i would have been Uh, yeah so the first thing yours is basically you find a mentor i always like uh if you don't find a mentor you're gone you're you're like mm-hmm. either either your parents are very very uh are your guiding force or you find somebody external uh that's your like that's something that's your paycheck that's mm-hmm. your real paycheck right that's your real paycheck right? you can find a mentor uh who can guide you uh by the way there is um Uh, we both have got a compliment from uh, Sabir Vijay okay. uh, for our for our fifties. So <laughs> thank you, and uh, my wife also sent you a thumbs up. So <laughs> thanks. But so uh, what I know, Ajay, about you in the, from the last conversation, also what what we had is that you're very very uh, attached to the faith. yeah right uh, and we had this long discussion and uh, something how uh, the one question which i forgot to ask you how, how how do you bring the values of uh sikhism to your everyday working like uh what drives you being there should be a drive for me like for example uh is that see uh, you know i uh, i always say that whenever i type at open even if the i'm at the lowest point of my life the time i time i told when i just feel like a king right and i just said oh, i'm going to do this like nothing yeah. is impossible uh and then i say you know ek bari pag band li hai na hun raja ho gaya hun to main kuch nahi mang sakta now i have to do right absolutely that drives me every day what does how does sikhism bring or drive ajay every day out there in the field of so i think uh, i think sikhism as a faith uh, i take it i think uh, one of the things i like about uh, the faiths that uh, you can define it for yourself very personally there are lessons to be learned from all the gurus which you can define for yourself personally i think i think for me one of the biggest lessons that you if you take guru tegh bahadur ji guru gobind singh ji i think especially these two gurus i think it's inspired me a lot uh, i think one of the thing that really shines through in fact across all our gurus uh, is that you know when you are when you really making change when you really want to make change or you really want to make an impact uh, you have to let your ego go you have to be egoless and that's a very i think entrenched uh, you know belief in sikhism right from the fact that you know when you are feeding others in langar right it's a very right. it's a very it's a very uh, humane activity you don't have any ego you don't think about you know that i am rich why should i feed someone who's poor why should i be preparing food for someone who's not at my social stature all of that you know difference or my religion or my caste etc all of that just vanishes away i think in that skill you know uh, is is the genesis of being curious in life the moment you are letting your ego go right you are i think more curious because you are you can ask anyone a question right because i think when people stop learning is when they bring their stature their rank 
uh, you right. know, their years of experience into the conversation. You know, when they talk to someone young and they're like, oh, I've done this for 20 years. Yaar, what, he, what will he teach me? I think once you bring that, very let go of that ego, like I am doing something new and I need to learn from someone who's in that sphere. I right. think that's the one, I think, incredible lesson that, you know, resonates across Sikhism, across all the gurus that let go of your, uh, you know, ego, let go of your ego. If you're doing something bigger, that has to be absolutely the first, I think, the cornerstone. I think the second, really the cornerstone for me, uh, which is very personal to how we, how we shape ourselves to the, you know, the pug and the beard uh, is a lesson I learned myself. I don't know. I, I don't know who to credit for that. Uh, is you know, when you're young as a sick, sick, uh, sick uh, you know, kid or a sick youth, people will tease you for, you know, why are you, why are you having this beard? Why do you have a turban? Why are you tying a patka, etc. People will tease you for that. I think one of the lessons I learned, I don't know, it organically came to me or whatever. Uh, it came to me that, you know, a lot of people who have made a difference in the world or have tried something or have made their careers better, have all or any, any new discovery or any new invention or being better in your job, comes from just being away from the herd. And this is your first shot at being different from the herd. If you can't take pride in that, if you can't take this lesson forward to your whole life, and then that's, that's, that's going to be very, that's very going to be defeat as you can't say I didn't, I couldn't look different. I couldn't handle two people telling me that I look different. How right. are you going to stand up in a meeting tomorrow? How are you going to stand up in your college tomorrow? How are you going to stand up, uh, you know, and create a startup where you have to look different? You know, people talk about differentiation all the time, you know, start differentiation as a strategy, differentiation as a mode. But that's, that's lost, right? If you're not, if you can't, that's your first shot. Sikhism gives you the first shot to be different. As you said, right? A king, it gives you a shot to being a king, uh, wearing a pug, having a pugadi. If you can't just, if you can't listen to two people and you change your identity. I think that's, that for me is a loss. And I think Sikhism gave me that chance. In fact, I'm thankful that Sikhism gave me that chance. So as a Sikh kid, you know, I was proud, you know, on this football team, I'm the on the only Sikh guy. Okay, on, on this, you know, in this college, I'm the only Sikh person. In this whole company, I'm the only Sikh guy. Oh, great. That's an immense feeling. I'm the different guy. I get the special attention already. I'm already seen differently. So I already have a voice in that room. I use it as a voice in my room. I'm different. Uh, I look different. I, I speak different. I behave different because of who I am as a Sikh. So I think that has been the, uh, that, that's been, I think, liberating lesson I've had. And that's what our gurus had, right? When Guru Gobind Singh Ji established Khalsa as a faith, that, you know, the warriors will look different. But he wanted to establish an identity. Uh, he was not telling you that, you know, that this is a burden or this is something else. It's your first shot to being different. So I think these two things, I think being less, being just letting your ego go. And I think being okay with a different identity, because that's what it's all about. We talk about it daily. But we miss the lesson in ourselves. It's it's us. We're different. Right. But you can miss the lesson, and that's that's your option in life, I guess. Brilliantly worded. Brilliantly worded. I think there's some things which I'm going to take from your as pointers, and I'll I'll share that with yeah, absolutely with the conversations that I have with anybody about the identity. Uh, what else? So I think uh, the uh, so there are two things. Uh, Coming back to uh, your professional life, yeah, right. I was seeing that. So from uh, from from an analytic an analytics firm, you moved on to Cars Twenty Four. Uh, uh, I think for consulting four. first and uh, Cars Twenty Four then. Yeah, right. So so what drove you to Cars Twenty Four, and then from there, how did you move on to uh, fintech? I, th- I think I'll, I am taking along those lessons that I just said. In, is a job or is a role allowing me to fulfill some skill sets? So when I started in analytics, uh, I think I loved the job profile there. I think New Sigma is a brilliant ground for creating, you know, curious and good people. I right. did a lot of exposure. I was, I was in a couple of meetings. I would directly present to VPs of large US brands directly as a young, you know, guy six months out of college, right. limited experience. I think they gave me that. Uh, I think then I moved on to IAM Calcutta. In fact, they helped me prepare for my IAM Calcutta interviews, the admission interviews. So they allotted me a mentor, a company manager who was from IAM Calcutta and they asked me to convert. Uh, so that was great. I moved on to IAM Calcutta, did really well there in academics. Uh, was really, really clear that I you know I went to IAM Calcutta for the academics. Very surprisingly, I didn't go for anything else, not for placements and everything. That's a side product because I realized this is the chance to learn from the best in the country. You know, the professors, you know, we talk about I am the Bath, Calcutta. These are the very few professors, very few people get a chance to just read, study, read, study. 
Uh, in fact, I was awarded a award called Maggu of the Year in the second year, which means someone who's always in the book. So I love that. I love that tag. I think when I started with consulting, it really uh, was a natural movement because in New Sigma, a lot of the work that we used to do was data analytics plus helping people solve problems. Right. I think that really resonated with me that consulting is the right kind of profession to do that. And it's an absolutely amazing profession. Uh, but I think uh, in the two years there, I worked for about 10 different clients, uh, did a lot of work on BD, did a lot of work on you know data science analysis, as well as presenting to senior leadership on you know the way forward to increase sales, improve efficiency. Uh, but I think uh, we live in very interesting times in the past 10, 15, if, if you see the Indian ecosystem, 15 years, if you see the Indian ecosystem, a lot of startups have come up. So an opportunity to run a vertical or run a firm or run a big, uh, you know, start something from scratch, which only would be available to you if you worked in a corporate for, let's say, 10, 15 years, you slogged your way to a senior position, was available suddenly. Uh, I think startups were coming up, you know, Flipkart has been around for the 10, past 10, 15 years uh, and multiple startups have come up. So I was looking for a young startup to join. The reason only I wanted to do that was because in consulting, I felt I know how to structure a problem. I know how to analyze it well and I know how to present it well. That's all great. I now, I have the missing skill in my, you know, quiver is execution. I don't know how to execute right now. I've done a lot of, uh, you know, you can give a gyan to a someone, give gyan to a regional manager or a sales manager in some location. That's fair. But having executing it on ground is, is a very different skill set. It requires a different mindset. You know, you, you've, done your, uh, you, you, you've, you've done a bunch of startups. You would know execution is very different from creating a strategy in a room. So right. I think class 24, I was talking to a college. So it started by a college senior of mine, uh, Mehul Agarwal uh, and Vikram Chopra. These are the two co-founders. Uh, so he's a college senior from IIM Calcutta. Uh, got talking to him uh, through a common contact. Uh, I had a couple of offers from larger startups, but this was a very unique opportunity. They were just very young then. Uh, they were in, I think, four cities. Uh, I think they bought me on and they gave me challenges like no other. I ran, you know, for the first time I ran sales, a sales operation directly, hands-on. Uh, you know, we were working out of a parking in West Delhi where, you know, we would buy cars, put them in a parking and then auction them. I've run physical auctions. I've like stood with a mic in an underground parking and I've auctioned like a literally, ki ye laals, you know, last shift hai, kitti hai gaadi, is pe kya bid literally like an auctioneer I've done that. I think so great execution skills. I think they allowed me to pick execution right. skills really, really. Uh, did a lot of uh, bunch of stuff there, mentored a few people. I think I got my mentorship skill developed there where I could mentor people. So I had a few people, uh, got to mentor them, really amazing time. Uh, when I was doing that, I realized, you know, I love execution. I know execution as a knack. Uh, but what are the three skills that really appeal to me as a person? So, you know, as I said, I'm always evaluating that, you know, I do have the right skill set. Do I, am I moving in the right direction? Right. So one of my, uh, you know, uh, friends from Cars24 had moved on to Payu. Uh, he was uh, the director of, uh, VP of marketing, sorry. So we were talking about, you know, payments for a while. And uh, he explained to me, you know, that payment is like, is really gelling with the kind of skill set you have. The skill set for me was, as I said, I'm great at process formulation and uh, forming, uh, you know, stringent structures, but solving them through automation and product. And I love bringing data analytics and sharp execution to things when I do them. So he said, you know, all of these skill sets and mostly FinTech is about this because FinTech is about scale. Uh, so you need product solutions. FinTech is a, is a very regulated space. So you need processes. And it's obviously, you know, any FinTech play, if you, re if you hear the numbers of PhonePay or any big company, you know, the number of transactions they have in a month is in the million scale of millions. So it's a game of data analytics and, you know, hard execution. So a, a transaction has to go through at night when you're making a transaction to a friend or a brand, it can't fail. You have to put really good processes and structures or execution in the back end for that to happen. You can't have failures. You know, when someone is making a payment for a critical uh, procedure, let's say he's paying to a, he's paying in a hospital, you can't have the card machine failing. You can't have the QR failing. You can't have those failures at those critical point in time. Somebody is booking a fees, a slot for their examination. You can't have that. So I think it really gelled, uh, started, ended up joining, uh, you know, PayU. PayU experience has been a roller coaster. I think started uh, by working with one of the greatest people I know, Pradeep Shekhawat. He's the head of uh, uh, Ola Finance today, uh, but uh, he was the head of the SMB function. I think he taught me the most about leadership that anyone could ever teach me. Uh, really, really good guy. Uh, I think the lesson, simple lesson he taught me was have a very, very high bias for execution. Uh, as a leader and again he reinforced the issue that have a low ego 
when i would tell him then you know that i'm facing an issue with another team what can we do he would just immediately get up from his cabin walk with me to that person solve it and move ahead no issues of let's get in a meeting room you know let's do a whole white boarding exercise no let's can we solve it in a 10 15 minute quick dirty hack way right now and then set up a for, you know secondary meeting for product analysis uh so i think he really allowed me to explore myself he gave me a bunch of opportunities again i got to lead sales partnerships here he allowed me to form the analytics team as well uh now i'm involved in a couple of strategic projects for the company so i think it's, it's i think i'm now coming to a stage where i now feel that my skill sets are really complete uh for me to even take bigger challenges i think there's still a couple of mi- uh, missing skills but i think i'm heading in the right direction skill wise so that's that's always my barometer that's always how i look at jobs at roles at anything uh, what are the skills that you think that that i'm missing i think a couple of skills that are uh, i think uh, missing uh, the first skill i would say that i am good at execution uh but uh, i aim for perfection a lot so when i'm doing things i would rather have them perfect in the first go uh then wait for the you know like a dirty simple solution to just test the market out uh the mvp strategy you know we call call it minimum viable product you know, right. there are thousands of books on it but i think it's very difficult to implement in life because you know when you put out a product you always feel yaar ye bhi kar sakte the yaar i could have done this i could have done better marketing i could have done a better product launch i could have maybe i could have gotten you know uh, you know better landing page for it uh, maybe the colors could have been better you can be perfect i think but i think uh, launch over perfection i think is is very good i think uh, there is a quote i think i'm not remembering who said it uh, but the quote is that if you are already you know if you're not embarrassed by your first launch then you're too late to the market market So I think that's a that's a beautiful quote to have. That if your product is doesn't embarrass you in the first launch, then you have wasted your time. I think you've just waited too long. If ten people are not telling you, "Yeah, you improve, do you improve, do," if you had already done all those improvements, then somebody has already launched the product and won the market. Correct. Uh, so I think uh, chase for f- perfection. I think I have to better uh, be better at developing MVPs uh, uh, as an approach. I think that's one. I think the second is. Uh, i have to build more uh, empathy in ma- managing teams i know as a data science guy i feel uh, i am half way there i'm very very data centric uh, while i have you know the eq quotient high uh, but i think there is a lot of movement to be made to have higher eq which i think is a very underrated skill uh, you know when people hire someone in a ca leadership position you know you can hire a person who can get you sales who can get you a team who can write partnerships who has a good rolodex that i have 50 names in my contact list my phone mail along and things will get done it's a good skill set but i think you need eq high eq to be really successful in the long run especially as a leader so i think eq and not chasing perfection all the time i think these are the two skills i need to somehow find the opportunities to help me execute this really um what next do you think is so fintex is such a large large yeah. ecosystem right uh, there is payments is just one to me for the of the Big picture. So, what is the next thing, next big thing that you think is going to happen in the payment uh, ecosystem? I think for me, I think fintech uh, till now uh, has been fintech 1.0 in India. Uh, while call it fintech 1.0, uh, it's just about taking the solutions that banks already have. So, a payment gateway uh, or a QR, right? All of all of what you know, payment companies do rides on banks. so you know a lot of people who say banks are slow and this fintech company is great don't have a clue that that fintech company is riding on that bank so if you have a payment gateway if your transaction is going through there is always a bank at the end i right. can't escape that fact so i think fintech 1.0 has been trying to just bring accessibility to users to all the bank services uh, which were which are which banks were doing a bad job at banks couldn't really bring those services seamlessly in a good you know mobile app or a good website solution to users uh, i think that's been fintech 1.0 for me fintech 2.0 is going to be you know now uh, there's a bunch of if you see the fintech ecosystem right a lot of people in the fintech ecosystem now are second generation entrepreneurs uh, if you see kunal shah if you see amrish rao who used to be the ceo of pay earlier you see jitain all of these guys uh, jitendra gupta uh, who heads who has his own uh, neo bank now a lot of these guys are second generation entrepreneurs so i think it's one of the most mature sectors in the country you know you have a bunch of people who have made startups sold them and are actually in the market with a second startup these guys are going to fundamentally change 
how we think about our core experiences how you think about insurance how you think about making a payment how you think about lending getting a loan so can i offer so i was talking to a uh, you know a friend who has, who's part of an insurance company insurance uh, startup so insurance is a i think very underrated aspect of uh, fintech so you see policy bazaar to the longest while was able to aggregate a lot of the offers that you know different insurance players had but then they are now also moving to the next stage can i create micro insurance for you for the fact that let's say i'm today taking a trip uh, from let's say delhi to manali uh, for that trip can i take out an insurance for that trip a one day insurance pay a premium right now that covers me any, for any minor accidents or may, any uh, highway repairs that come instead of buying a full year ka highway you know package that allows me to have repairs on the road can right. i get can i buy a simple one day insurance right now on the go that's fundamentally rewiring how these processes are built on the back end so there will be now the fintech 2.0 will be an overhaul of the architecture i think that's already started with upi you know for for the longest while if i had to send a payment to you uh, in the middle of the night uh, the only way was you know go you do go to a bank transfer then it was wallets wallets were not the best way because then you'll have to transfer back to your bank account now upi yeah. makes it so seamless and we don't realize that you know a lot of work has gone into just rewiring the ar- architecture behind it i think that's going to be fintech 2.0 where it's not just going to be seamless discovery of products uh, for consumers it's going to be rewiring the whole architecture uh, whether it's payments whether it's insurance whether it's lending i think the architecture is going to get changed and right. i think we have the great set of people in the you know country who are leading fintech today and i think that phase will now come where fintech is going to be that i feel that e-commerce has a lot of unfulfilled promise in india e-commerce firms have a lot of unfulfilled promise i think fintech is going to be that stage uh, where you know india is going to lead the world in fact uh, you know if you see upi uh, pix uh, which is a uh, these uh, you know parallel of upi brazil has launched that so and ua is also looking to launch uh, something similar to upi taking npci as help so a lot of countries are now looking to india to drive innovation i think when we talk about make in india and all of that i think fintech is going to be a very solid play because you know we have the very very smartest bankers and very good seasoned founders in the country who will lead that change I think that's what I feel. You know, fintech two point zero is all going to be about next ten years at least. Well, it looks exciting right now. Uh, the way things are developing, whatever conversations I've been have, having with, uh, like with you and uh, others in that in the particular field, uh, the one thing which uh, I think most of the startups are looking uh, at fintech is basically I'm looking at fintech is how do you create a hyper uh, hybrid model uh for payment collections that's been a big for for example we we uh, singsal gets a lot of the orders to remote of uh, remote villages where people don't even know how to you know make a transaction it's right they they just saw us on insta the only thing which they know is either tiktok or or insta yes. and for ads or whatever they have uh you know they have come across us uh, they don't know how to make a uh, uh, to place an order so they will call yeah the, the biggest problem is how do i send the, the particular order because uh, so even uh, or the only base india post and india post is not going to collect cod yeah so how i think that's something which uh, you know we all are looking for for from the fintech industry because that if that can be solved where yeah. i can deliver the product and then leave it and say okay now absolutely payment right and is the, uh, the ease of making that payment will actually become which will actually open a huge huge avenue for the the e-commerce industry uh, i think that that's happening to a certain extent uh, you know sorry to cut you off i think uh, what shopify is doing i think uh, in the us uh you know shopify for the longest while helped you bring your own uh, you know identity to a website that's all that they did uh then they moved on to doing payments uh, now shopify has started their own fulfillment exercise as well correct uh, so the, you don't have to worry about a single dashboard that tra- tracks your inventory tracks your sales tracks your receivables and also lets you track your shipments i think that's i think social commerce is going to be the next i think move forward Uh, where i think a lot of these i think for a lot of you know when we say tiktok competitors or you know whatever which, which india will make or misho is one good example of that whatsapp is whatsapp could lead that uh, wave is when you see a video the simplest act right i see a video on a tiktok 
uh can i that's already being you know experimented on instagram can i just click on that and make a payment right away for the clothes that that guy is wearing so if a guy in a video is wearing a pink turban can i make an order right away on the video i like the look i like the style can i make a payment right away i think it's yes. we are moving to that frictionless stage on payments uh, but i think uh, larger players like shopify etc you know will try to meld in everything together because i think that's where they're moving together arming the rebel alliance that if you're a store don't worry about anything we got right. you equipped to set up a website we'll take care of your payments we'll take care of your econ we'll connect your erp we'll do the pay we'll do the logistics as well so i think that's 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 the space i think uh, fintech is definitely looking at because that's very frictionless payments and that makes brands you know the payment to a brand so easy i don't have to go to your website select a product uh, put it in a cart uh, the old way of doing e-commerce can i do social commerce can i instantly make a purchase from within a video app i think that's right. that's those are the things that you know fintech will also explore so as i said it's going to be rewiring the whole way we look at certain industries fintech is going to like really unbundle everything and say no you don't have to do it this way all the all the way along you know maybe amazon did it or ebay did it like this for the last 15 years but now things can really change so i think that's that's the way ahead definitely last question absolutely okay dragging i'm dragging this but so uh, there's a lot of on linkedin i we think we both are very very active on linkedin um uh, what's your say about the geo copying zoom <laughs> so i think you know uh, you know is it two three ways of looking at it uh, you know a lot of people have been criticizing them you know online that you know with all the capital that they had they've been just been able to copy and is that is that the really the best use of uh, uh, you know capital uh, you know i believe if you look at you know any industry if you look at the china startup industry or any startups ecosystem that has grown uh, even at like, even said silicon valley for a while even i think their imitators cop up i think imitation is the first step you take to actually make something you create something i think it's it's i think we're big, being a bit harsh on you know uh, geo when we say that they imitated i think that's the first step you imitate to create and the next step is you figure out that you know i imitated it worked for a while it worked for a few set of consumers now what do i do for my next breakthrough growth i think everyone wants a you know there are spark plug growth immediate growth and that's imitation and everyone will do that but i think the next leap will come when you will have to genuinely think of innovation and i think that's what that's what geo is i think banking on let's you know let's imitate for a while get to a few users and to really move to the next set of users or really engage the current set we'll have to innovate i think it, it will come i think first and it and the only good thing i take away out of this in fact is uh, that people are now talking about indian indian startups right uh, indian indian innovation people are saying that oh we are bad at innovation we are copying or you know we are not celebrating you know look alike we're not saying that oh this is the look like good enough let's give it a 20 billion dollar valuation people are like oh you're imitating great but do innovation go do innovation you have to beat china or we have to do better whatever so i think that's good that people are now questioning the value that startups bring and i think that will lead to definitely lead to the next stage of innovation i think imitation as a growth hack is fine i think i'm good with good imitation as a growth hack i think it there's nothing wrong with it uh i think they can do it and you know if you're if we can't we can't be naive enough to think that you know 1.2 lakh 2.5 lakh crore that they raised is going to drive better uh, you know product development a product de- being a better product company or being more innovative has nothing to do with money if it had to do with money i think no other no startup would have been born in the world uh, right. if it all had to do with money so i think uh, but i think imitation is a first step to innovation so sooner or later hopefully this is the best supply i think uh, i always say what i copy this from steve jobs steve jobs copied it from picasso good be <laughs> great artist steel Yes, absolutely. I think I think there's no harm as long as it leads to the ecosystem growing. I think I don't see harm. So true. I think the next uh, bet is going to be only on their features and all. That's where the asthma yeah. is going to either remain or just say, okay, you're a copycat and go to be out. In fact, if you see uh, Geo Chat, right? Geo Chat has been launched. If you see Geo Chat, right, it looks like WhatsApp, uh, but they have started a section in it called Channels. which is actually merging of news with chat so they wow. have a channel for the rajasthan government they have a channel for you know sadguru they have a channel for other people when you click on that channel all the latest messages that you know rajasthan government is putting out important announcements are available to you in a chat window wow i and you can immediately go from there to their twitter handle and to their facebook handle so from a chat functionality it looks like whatsapp but they added very localized features for india as well 
So I think that 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 is a product already out there, which is you know one step ahead of Geo Meat, where they've already taken that one step to being innovative as well after the imitation. So I think that's already coming up, but you know, nobody talks about that because you know you know tailgating someone or calling someone out is more fun, and you know appreciating someone for the good work or something that they've done uniquely is is I think it's not human nature. We just love to call out people for the bad stuff or not doing enough that you not done you not done you not done enough. You can do better. I think that's human nature. Uh, we love to bicker. I think as a as a as a species, we love to bicker. <laughs> that's that's a visible on social media a lot. <laughs> so, so before we end this, I think we should bring the news as well. Uh, yes, I'll I'll, I'll I'll bring the news again uh, in another recording. But uh, I think this is going to be my last uh, episode on sins in conversation. Sins in conversations will continue. It's going to have a fresh face. It's going to have a uh a more intelligent kind of a conversations uh, not uh, the way i bring in but uh, the person who's going to lead singh in conversation is now going to be ajay pal singh city uh okay. looking I, forward to it i think when i started talking to him a lot of commonalities i saw and i think uh, singh star requires people like ajay to bring in a lot of value to the the platform right uh and i'm really really excited i think with whatever we have discussed whatever uh, uh you know the ideas that we have exchanged i think uh, you're going to take sing style and sings in conversation to a totally different level absolutely looking forward to it i love the conversation format i think ig live is something you know i love podcast but i think this is great, good enough Uh, i think this is better in fact uh, so looking forward to taking it to new heights i think you know bringing you listeners and you know viewers of this many many sick personalities they you know nobody has a clue how many sick gentlemen are doing or and women are doing some great stuff uh, you know out there across industries so i think it's i think this is a great forum to bring that forward so you already start getting uh, i think uh, the flying car that's my wife she said plug sandy pool and Sandeep is, by the way, uh, uh, is my brother-in-law, and he's one of the biggest supporters of Sing Style. And nice. I think he loved the idea when I brought that that Ajay is going to be a part of it. Uh, so great, Ajay, and uh, so thank you so much to be a part of uh, this discussion as well as uh, your future endeavor with us. Thank you so much. I think we we should take this to greater heights. I think Sing Style would have a. We I think the comment thread would should not stop in the next ten episodes. Just keep rolling on, rolling on, rolling on. That's your <laughs> job. Job <laughs> was to start the conversation. Your job is to build the conversation now, right? Absolutely. Great. So thank you, Ajay. And I think uh, we'll do that. We'll do a separate announcement for this. Post this uh, video. Great. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Sasri Kaldi. Bye. Bye.